Hi everyone, certainly a long time no see, so it's time to make some time to make a, another Mythbuster video. So this is a pop-up request that I've been asked to do for months, I just didn't have the time to make one. So now that I have some time, we're going to be making Tarantula Mythbuster video 50. And the most popular request that I've gotten uh, is the Sakaris Tarosis, the Succide Sand Spider. And what a perfect way to actually talk about the spider because there's really not much information that you can find over the internet, let alone a video. So yeah, so keep in mind the spider that I'm reviewing is actually a true spider, not a tarantula, but I do want to keep the titles consistent to the video because the information that I'm going to relate to is very similar in style to the other Mythbuster videos that I've done with tarantulas. So anyways, I'm going to talk about uh, the common name, uh, how do you pronounce them scientifically, because as an experienced hobbyist, it's very important to start to learn the scientific names early, especially if you're buying online, where uh, common names are almost rarely used. Talk about the sizes, how big do they get as males and females, how long do they live in general. Um, availability, are they widely available, or are they sparsely available. Talk about the basic care, very, very simple. I mean, it's, it's really easy, even much more easier than the rose here. I found some cool information about breeding, and I'll, I'll show this on the computer as well as I'll link that to the video description. And I'm going to spend a lot more time on this because just how venomous are they? Uh, this is simply because it's a very potent spider, and it's actually the second most venomous spider in the world. But you don't really hear that very much because bites are extremely rare on there, and it's kind of worth you know, kind of noting what it can do should you get bitten. And this is why I drew the skull and crossbones because it is a pretty toxic spider. So recommendations. Do I recommend this for a first time hobbyist? Absolutely not. So anyways, before I actually get onto the video, uh, here's a two week update uh, from uh, the video that I posted on the 15th of January. Well, 11 days right now. So this is the Latrodectus uh, Hesperus Exac that you have seen still intact. Uh, so another likely two more weeks and it'll be hatching out. All right, so this is the six side sand spider. But first of all, before I even go there, we'll show you what they're called. Well, uh, this species goes by the most common, common name, uh, the six eyed sand spider. Why? Well, the species is primarily found on sand. Um, the Sicarius genus is found in the deserts of Chile as well as Africa. So currently, the Sicarius has 22 described species, and two of them are available in the hobby. The Esterosis, which is the one that I'm going to be showing you, which comes from Chile, and also the Sicarius honey, which comes from Africa. Now. Why did they call it the six-eyed sand spider? Well, simply because it does have six eyes. So the eye arrangement is as follows. They have three pairs of eyes and arranged in a dyad form. So basically one on the, in the center below and then two above. So this kind of improves their field of vision, but not as much as your uh, wolf spiders or your jumping spiders. But they do have a lot better vision than tarantulas. Remember, tarantulas have six to eight eyes that are close together so they really can't see very much so they're kind of myopic so the way we pronounce the scientific name is Sicarius terosis or Sicarius ha ni so yeah pretty easy name to figure out so this is what my sand spider looks up close and personal kind of resembles that of a crab spider eh but anyway, so the sizes are kind of fairly large for a true spider. Males, you're looking at between 2 to 3 inches. You have to expect that males are going to be a lot smaller than females. Females, generally around 3 to 4 inches. They're pretty large for a um, sp true spider. Yeah, I just love the way they behave in captivity. Well, this is kind of why I love, really like the six-eyed sand spider, mainly because of their uh, digging abilities. Well, they'll start to hide under the ground, and then they'll start digging themselves. Yeah, it's really cool. So if I were to show you what a female and male looks like, um, yeah, you can see right here. Ooh, 
Sorry about that. It's, it's a really bad picture. Hang on, let me just go up close and personal. You can see that the females are larger. Here's the male. A lot smaller bodied, extremely long legged, and it has bulbous pedipalps, which they need uh, for uh, breeding. Now, how is their availability? Are they really sparsely available? Are they widely available? Are they harder to find? Or are they easy to find? Well, and the six-eyed sand spider is very sparsely available, and when it's available, it's only available at a handful at a time. So I've been hunting for this spider for almost four, four and a half years. Yeah, so it's a pretty long time. So luckily when Tarantula Canada has these, I kind of jumped on the offer because I really wanted to have one. So. Uh, this spider originally was bred in France and Tarantula Canada imported them. So at the time they were selling them about a third of an inch for around $50. So it's virtually inexpensive for a species that is not always available seen in the hobby. And I would imagine that the US will slightly be a little bit cheaper, maybe a little bit more expensive. Um, I really haven't seen any ones for sale at the moment. And in UK, especially uh, in Germany and Europe where prolific breeding is done on these species, they're much more cheaper. Now surprisingly, I know the UK subscribers will want to know, can you get the species? And yes you can, you can actually keep these spiders legally. Now I am aware that uh, the UK has what is known as the DWAA license, which means that it kind of prohibits um, a hobbyist to own specific venomous um, species. I know that the close relative, the brown recluse spider, is listed on there, and as well as some buthid scorpions, but surprisingly, the Sicarius terosus being much more venomous than the L. reclusa, the brown recluse spider isn't on their list, so it's perfectly legal to own one even in the UK. That's really kind of surprising news to me, since there is our the second most dangerous and venomous spider in the world. Now their basic care, oh, it's so simple. It's actually a lot more easier than caring for a basic rose hair. Now primarily um, you should not use a water dish for these uh, spiders uh, because simply because they come from the dry uh, desert scrublands of Chile and Africa so they do not see humidity whatsoever so the only way they get the humidity is from the food that they eat so you don't really need a water dish you don't need to miss them very simple right substrate you should primarily use sand uh, simply because they are seen in the wild where they dig themselves in sand kind of like you would see over here this is what they do. That's kind of what mine is doing right now. So yeah, so the substrate choice, again, any color sand is really up to you. I personally like to use the black sand, the Midnight Black from the Repti uh, Eco Company. And the reason why I like to use black sand is simply because when I do maintenance, I kind of actually like to see the spider and know where it is when I'm, you know, like taking tongs and removing its food. You can use normal colored sand, like the light brown, but it will camouflage the spider, so you might have a hard time finding it. And substrate, you don't really need that much. This is basically fine, or even half of that. They don't remember, they don't really dig and they don't really. Well, by dig, I mean they don't really make burrows, so uh, you don't really need to put that much substrate in there. So slings should be kept in pill vials that you see over here. And if it were an adult, um, something like this would work. Well, no, that's a bit too small. Something like this would work, like just a simple critter keeper put about sand up to here and that's pretty much it. No water dish, you can add some decor if you like. Um, they're not going to, they're likely not going to use it but just an empty barren sand up to here and it's it's good. Alright so about breeding information just before I get on to the how venomous are they. Now 
there is not much known about breeding. Uh, breeding has been prolifically done in the UK as well as in European, other European countries. Now, this is the only time where the six-eyed sand sputter actually makes webs. Normally they don't, but this is what a cocoon looks like. They attach it to the um, cork bark. So you can see it's a really nice web pattern that measures around half an inch to an inch long. And babies emerge. So this is exactly the same one that I originally got eight months ago before it evolved into that beast. So generally uh, they take around, the egg sacs are kind of low, around 50 to 100. So much, pretty much like your uh, Black Widow. So just how bad is Saccharius terosus venom? Well. These are the second most dangerous, or no, sorry, not the most dangerous, the second most venomous species in the world. And you don't really hear that much information about it because bites are extremely rare. There's only two bite reports on record, and I didn't mention this in passing when I was featuring this in the feeding video. Uh, one person died, the other person had to amputate his arm simply from the bite. Yeah, so it's not a pretty spider to get bitten by, and please do not be dumb to ever think of handling a spider like this, because there, it can kill you if you're not too careful. Now, the six-eyed spy, sand spider, like its close relative, the local Celsus reclusa, or better known as the brown recluse spider, is in the family Saccharidae, and Saccharidae species have what is known as cytotoxic venom, meaning that if you leave it untreated, it will do nasty stuff to your body. So people are aware of the dangers of the brown recluse spider uh, simply because they cause necrosis to the human tissue. Basically, your skin starts to deteriorate and forms really ugly lesions. It's really disgusting and graphic. And I'm not gonna show that on camera. <laughs> you just look at those uh, pictures on Google, well the six-eyed sand spider can also do that but many many times stronger. Now it simply doesn't help that the six-eyed sand spider is larger and has larger fangs so it can inject more venom. But are they really that aggressive? Well, not really. Sp sand spiders are really docile, They're, they are rather skittish so bites are extremely rare. And let's see. Their venom is composed of an enzyme known as sphingomyelinase D. Now, sphingomyelinase D is an enzyme that attacks your skin tissues and starts popping your red blood cells like a balloon. Now, if you leave it untreated, what's going to happen is that more and more of your red blood cells are going to pop. And eventually, what's that's going to happen is that it's going to form clots and it's going to restrict blood flow. And when that happens, your kidneys are starting to, are gonna to start to fail, you're going to be getting aneurysms and possibly the worst thing, heart attacks. So currently there is no anti-venom available for this species. And the only anti-venom that there is possibly is to basically amputate your arm or your leg wherever you get bitten by, so that way you don't get the venom from spreading. Now, there's only two saving grace why I would keep a spider this potentially lethal. Well, simply because I mentioned earlier, it's pretty docile, it's not aggressive, it's not like you're biting your face like your Pecanserides or your Funitria fira, which is the Brazilian wandering spider. And also, if you saw it from the video, it does have a hard time climbing glass, which is the reason why I would keep uh, the species. So, someone on the Arachnid uh, Boards thread, I'm, which I'm going to be linking to the video descriptions, kind of said it best. Uh, the six eyes fan spider is kind of like a grandmother with a shotgun. <laughs> there we go, you can see it, it's uh, really cool. Yeah, the grandmother with the shotgun, it's a really good analogy for the species. The grandmother is kind of like the spider because of its docile and generally non-aggressive temperament. However, the venom is kind of like the shotgun because it can be potentially lethal if you get bitten by it. So, 
this is a spider that is not from everyone. I completely understand if you don't want to own the spider. It takes a lot of courage and <laughs> especially mucho balls to own a species of this nature. So please do not be ashamed if uh, you don't want just because I own a six science spider and you don't. It's completely as I completely respect and re understand your opinion if you don't want to get one. However, it is a cool spider, and if you are a beginner, please stay away from the species and please do not bother handling it because I really don't want you to get bitten by the spider. I mean, this is not this video is not meant to scare you, but just to show you uh, what the species can do if you get bitten by it. So, as long as you, as you respect it and don't bother it too much, it won't bother you, and you're perfectly fine. And there we go. That is the Mythbuster video that I know about the six-eyed sand spider. So hope this video helps you guys and, and understanding what a cool and unique uh, spider this is. And hope you enjoy it.